The Mic Show presents... Test Drive Interviews. Brought to you by Billy Craft Hall in Lynchburg. Hey, it's Mike, and welcome to another edition of Test Drive Interviews with Billy Craft Honda. Uh, we are out at the new dealership. Oh, well, not not quite so new. You guys have been here for uh, for quite a while, and we're joined by Jesse. Uh, Jesse's joining us, and uh, today we're going to take a look at the uh, the Honda what? 2020 Honda Fit EX. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, now this thing, uh, describe for us the Honda Fit. So. This is the mid model. You have two models below this and two models above it. Um, it has the entire safety suite on it as well, which includes the lane keeping assist that reads the lines of the road and keeps you in the lanes. It has the adaptive cruise control that slows down based on the car in front of you. It has the road departure mitigation that will vibrate that steering wheel when you're going over the lines. And um, as well as some other different safety features with the backup camera and things of that nature. All right, and inside, the Honda Fit, mm -hmm. uh, everything fits everything in the Honda Fit, fit. Yes. And, and you've got, now you've got all the technology. Mm -hmm. We do, because this in the, in the EX model, it's basically the best bang for your buck if you don't need leather. So you'll have all the touch screen um, technology with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto when you plug in here, okay. it'll come up here. So you can do your um, maps and everything on the screen. Okay. It also has, when we put our right turn signal on, it shows everything what? on the right side when we're changing lanes. I love that. And there's Luke. Yeah. <laughs> 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 then it also has the safety suite I was telling you about, um, where it has the lane keeping assist, the adaptive cruise control here, yeah. the forward collision warnings up here. That's what uh, alerts you on the dash to brake okay. if it detects a collision happening okay. and then it has over to the left of the steering wheel your road departure mitigation that will vibrate that steering wow. wheel if you're going over the lines so that all these things can be turned on and off I recommend never turning off the forward collision warning no. but everything <laughs> else yeah is okay when yeah. and we uh, we took a Honda fit out mm -hmm. uh, it was one of the first test drive interviews mm -hmm. that we did and it was it, it was pretty bare bones it was mm -hmm. a standard shift uh, didn't quite have all the bells and whistles yeah. This one is not, it's the mid model, the EX model. So the EX pretty much in all of our categories gives you the most um, technology without the leather. Very nice. So it's really nice. Um, and, and it's push to start, keyless entry, keyless go. And, and it's got the moon roof. Mm -hmm, and a sunroof as wow. well. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So we want to introduce Ryan Kress. She is uh, Ms. Wheelchair Virginia 2020. Is that correct? That's correct. That's All me. Right. Well, welcome to Test Drive Interviews. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for coming up uh, and being part of this. Um, I've, I've been following your story on social media uh, for quite some time, but I'd, I'd, I'd like for you to tell our listeners um, and our viewers uh, you know, the, the story behind uh, your, your crown but more importantly, uh, your your life, really. Sure. Um, so, a little bit about me. Um, you always have to, you know, I miss wheelchair Virginia. People always ask, well, why are you in a chair? Mm -hmm. So, I was born with a genetic joint disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Um, it's fairly rare. It's getting a little bit more popularity in the media lately. Um, but when I was diagnosed about mm, a decade ago, nobody knew what it was. My doctor knew very little. Okay. Um, basically, what it does is um, all, it's a, genetic abnormality where all of my connective tissues, so all of the glue that holds your body together, your muscles, your ligaments, everything that forms your organs is too stretchy. So the biggest landmark thing with that is that all of my joints dislocate very easily. Wow. Um, and that's kind of, it's progressive. Okay. So I was ambulatory for years, um, probably about three years ago, I had to start walking with a cane because my hips began to dislocate as I walked. Um, and then it escalated to needing forearm crutches and now with the chair because it's just not safe for me to ambulate anymore. It's not safe for me to walk around. Um, my hips, knees, and ankles dislocate as, as I walk. They're just very unstable. I have jelly legs. <laughs> but um, that's, that's more my diagnosis. Um, but I have worked in healthcare my entire life. Um, so I worked as an EMT starting when I was 16 years old, went on to go to nursing school. Um, the reason I went out after this tract is because I was in the ER so much, because if you think about your, your joints dislocating constantly, um, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> I lived in the ER. Wow. <laughs> so my mom told me, you know, you might as well get paid. You might as well learn to push the stretcher. <laughs> so I did. Uh, became an ER nurse. Uh, worked that for about six, seven years. Loved that job. Um, but it got to the point where it wasn't safe for me to walk my patients. It wasn't safe for me to be on the floor nursing any longer. Gotcha. So I took a job as a case manager, still in the ER because I just can't get enough. Yeah. Um, and I basically walk my patients through the discharge process. I get them set up with all the things that people, my case manager set me up with. Physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, any kind of home resources, a lot of social work kind of work. But um, that's what I'm, I'm doing now. Uh, tell us about your role uh, as Miss Wheelchair Virginia uh, and and the mission and, and, uh, and all that. Absolutely. So um, the Miss Wheelchair Virginia program um, it's not a pageant, it's, um, it's actually an advocacy-based program where um, you enter and you kind of compete with uh, public speaking abilities. There's no talent portion or evening gown, nothing, it's none of that, because when they first signed me up, the first thing I said was, are you going to put me in a bathing suit in front of all these people? <laughs> so no, none of that. Uh, a lot of interviews, um, public speaking, and then advocacy work. Okay. So um, the reason, that the, the mission that I kind of started was, when, like I said before, when I was diagnosed, nobody really knew what this was. Right. I had no one in my life, or even my doctors, that could tell me what my future was going to look like. You know, social media wasn't as big of a thing back then, um, and the internet, you know, you, you had a Wikipedia page with about that much text. No one could tell me, you know, will I be able to have kids? Will I be able to live a full life? What, what can I do? So I started an Instagram page, um, chronically underscore rye, <laughs> okay. um, where I kind of just shared what my life is like with a chronic illness, with a disability. Um, and at first I kind of started it just because back then when I was walking, if you saw me, you couldn't tell I was disabled. Um, and it, unless I told you, or you saw me fall, which <laughs> happened a lot. Um, but I wanted to show, you know, the ins and the outs of what my life was really like. And I expected, you know, my family to follow and like two other people, but suddenly it just caught on because I was showing all these people that, that yes, I am a disabled woman. Yes, I have to deal with all these issues every day. Now, yes, I am a wheelchair user, but I still work a full-time job. I still, I play wheelchair basketball. I do all kinds of adaptive sports. I do all kinds of things I'm not supposed to. Sorry, physical <laughs> therapist. But um, it became this giant, um, just, resource for all of these people out there and it's it's really changed my life because I expect it just to be therapy for me um, and getting to actually help all these mostly women EDS mainly affects women but some men um, um, you know from all over the world asking me questions as a nurse as a disabled woman and then getting to really help them has taken the sting out of having to leave bedside nursing for me but um, wheelchair program so what I get to do is I get to travel all over the state of Virginia I get to um, I set up kind of my own um, uh, kind of platforms and things so I get to pick what I do and so I do a lot of things with um, adaptive sports um, promoting that I do a lot of public speaking um, just because I like to talk <laughs> um, and I, I just get to share my message of my platform and my motto got to pick these when you got crowned. Um, my motto is fear is temporary, regret is forever. Because with a diagnosis like Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, there is a lot of fear and there is a lot of unknown. And if you let that control your life, you are never going to be able to live the life that you want to lead. And I don't want other people affected by this illness or any disability to feel that way and to feel like their wheelchair is is a you know jail cell or something that they are confined to it's it's not without my wheelchair i would not be able to do half the things i wouldn't be able to walk i mean, to walk i wouldn't be able to work i wouldn't be able to play sports to work out to do any of the things that i love to do my wheelchair is my freedom and that's kind of what my main message is my second message um, is my platform, which is increasing mental health care in the um, population of people who are disabled and affected by a mobility limiting illness or disability. Because um, what they don't tell you when you're diagnosed is you are going through a grief process. You are losing that person that you used to be. You are losing that piece of your independence. And that stings. It, it's, it's a lot. It is absolutely a loss that has to be mourned. And if you're not told about this, 
you could have, I mean, all kinds of reactions. I had major grief re reactions that cost me my job, my marriage, my family, a lot of people in my family because I didn't know what I was going through. And I don't want anyone else to suffer the way that I did. Now, I went around when I first started thinking about this process. Um, as a case manager, I knew that there wasn't, there weren't any mental health resources for this population because if there were, it would be my job to give them to them. <laughs> and um, so I started doing some research. I uh, asked everyone on my basketball team, you know, um, people affected by paralysis, by cerebral palsy, for spina bifida. When you were diagnosed, were you told that this was a grief reaction and this is something that you would go through? Every single one of them said no, no matter if it was a traumatic injury, a car accident, or just, you know, being born that way, were their parents offered anything? Nothing. Um, I have a friend who was affected by a spinal tumor, um, spinal cancer, and he had to have actually a lot of his spinal cord removed at nine years old. And so I went to him and, you know, he's nine when it happened. And he said, now that I wasn't told anything, I wasn't in therapy. So I went to his parents thinking, surely, you know, your kid is diagnosed with this major life changing um, disease. Were you offered mental health resources? No. So there's wow. just, there's nothing. And I am working to change that. Um, even if, if it's just a little thing of, you know, you receive this diagnosis and someone comes in and just says, hey, you know, this is a possibility. Here are some resources if you need it. Here's my card. Move on. You don't, you know, therapy's not for everyone. Not everyone's going to respond the same way. But just giving them that heads up that, yes, you are going to mourn the loss of that person that you once were. You are going to mourn the loss of your independence. And you need to think about that. And you need to, you know, be aware just in case, you know, you start acting all kind of crazy <laughs> and you don't know what's going on. Hey, maybe it is that grief. This grief can do a lot to a person. So between my double missions <laughs> of promoting independence um, and then the mental health piece, that is it's what I'm, I'm getting to do as Miss Wheelchair Virginia. And it is insane <laughs> and an amazing, an amazing opportunity. And I'm just, I'm thrilled. And Jesse, this is for for such a small vehicle, mm -hmm. and and I say small relatively compared, you know, to, to a vehicle like an Accord right. uh, or some of your uh, crossover vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, this is n number one, surprisingly roomy, uh, right. extreme. We all fit. Mm -hmm. we, not only do we all fit, <laughs> we but have everything room. fits. Everything. Uh, it's it's very very comfortable, yes. and it is so comfortable uh, of, of a drive. It's so mm -hmm. smooth and there it's not bumpy at all. It's very, very nice. Mm -hmm. And you won't believe the gas mileage. Um, tell us, tell us, tell <laughs> us. We want to know. On the highway, you can get 38 miles to the gallon. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> and that's before the econ button, which the econ button is on pretty much all of our vehicles now. It diminishes a little bit of horsepower to give you more gas mileage. You're probably going to average around 41 with that thing on. Wow. That is tremendous. <laughs> uh, if if you were considering maybe the purchase uh, of a used vehicle or pre-owned vehicle, that's fine. But you may also want to take a look at the fit. We have pre-owned fits as well, though. That's see, yep. best of both worlds. So you we get the best of both worlds at yeah. Billy Craft Honda. You really do. So Ryan, um, you've been in this role for how long? Since last November. Okay. Uh, and in that time done a, a number of speaking engagements and, and a lot of advocacy. Um, what What is maybe uh, some real standout moments for you? Um, I would say um, probably my top one right now, I recently got to, I had the opportunity to speak at, um, it was a women's conference out of Roanoke called the Crown Conference. Um, they do it yearly, but it was mainly um, for women in the area trying to better themselves, entrepreneurs kind of situation. Um, and so I was there along with Doc Kelly, Miss Virginia. Um, she spoke as well. And I kind of, you know, I'm a, I'm a little Southern girl from Bedford County, okay? I was not expecting the crown. I have half my head shaved, I have tattoos. I do not look like a pageant girl. Um, <laughs> so I kind of rolled into this, this speaking engagement expecting, you know, people at the church. No, there were over 300, 400 people present. Wow. And um, I realized suddenly in the midst of this, when I'm about to get up there and speak, 
that there's no ramp <laughs> to get oh on the stage. Um, and so, as a, you know, a woman who I can I can stand for short periods of time, I was like, okay, we're gonna use this. <laughs> we're gonna show a little bit more. I'm very very transparent with my disability, with the things that I have to deal with. Um, and so I said, you know, this is, this is going to be part of it. So I got one of the photographers, the big old guy, I said, all right, you're going to pick my chair up. I'll transfer to the stage and I'll transfer up there. And while I was doing it, the, there was another speaker, you know, finishing up. So I go and I transfer. And I kind of have to, once the, my chair is on the stage, I kind of have to use my elbows to lift myself up and climb into the chair. And it took me a second. I missed the first time. But I did it and I got up and I realized the entire room is silent. Wow. Everyone is just kind of like watching this this transfer, which is something, you know, as a wheelchair user, I do a million times a day, every day. And every transfer is different. And every time I do it, you know, it's it's always a, am I gonna make it kind of thing. Um, but unless you are a wheelchair user or you know someone with mobility deficits in your life, seeing just that little, little portion of their life is kind of shocking. Um, it's something that, as someone who was ambulatory for years, I know I took for granted, just being able to stand up, sit down, and, you know, get in a chair. Sure. It was something easy, um, but it was it was kind of an interesting moment, and then I continued speaking about, you know, my life and what it's like as, a, as someone who was once ambulatory and now isn't, and as someone who worked in, for years in medicine and is continuing to do so. Um, the feedback I got from that speaking engagement was just, it blew me away. Um, there were people whose moms, you know, were older and were in wheelchairs. I had one um, was speaking to me about her mom who had post-polio syndrome and had no longer had the use of her legs, but she was a professional clown <laughs> growing up. Wow. Yeah. And so she's learning to do that from her chair and they put us in connection and she heard my story and now she's, you know, going after that herself. She's relearning to do the makeup with the use of her hands that she has and just getting to see that my story, which is, you know, it's my life, it's my norm. I'm totally used to all of the things that I have to deal with because I deal with it every day. I don't realize that it's impactful, that it's different for people who don't see it. And um, I just, it blew me away a little bit and really got, made me get my butt in the gear and do some more speaking engagements because I am affecting people and I am, my message does, it's helping. And as a, as a nurse, that's what I do. That's what I love to do. Um, and so I'm, I'm very excited for some upcoming ones. Um, I have actually this Saturday, I will have a booth in Richmond, um, Sportables, which is an adaptive um, sports company out of Richmond, is having their very first annual Richmond Adaptive Sports Festival. Wow. So as an athlete, um, I was thrilled to do this one. Um, so I'll have a booth down there, sending autographs, taking pictures, talking the whole time. Um, and then this upcoming August is the big one. That is Nationals uh, for Miss Wheelchair America. Wow. Yeah, that's something that most people didn't know existed. I did not know it existed. <laughs> and, um, and now we know. Yeah, exactly. And now we all know. So I will be traveling to Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay. To compete against 30, 30 some um, other women who have been crowned the Miss Wheelchairs of their state, the state title holders. Okay. Um, it is a week long competition. Wow. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that either. Um, lots of interviews, lots of um, doing more speaking down there. So it'll be amazing to be surrounded by other women in chairs um, doing kind of have kind of the same mission as I do. Um, so that is going to be really exciting. And and you're fundraising for this as well. I am. Um, so the entry fee to this is not cheap. Um, it's about two thousand okay. um, dollars. And that's without travel fees. <laughs> and um, as y'all have heard, I'm a nurse. <laughs> so I am working to fundraise for that um, right now. You can find me um, many ways. Uh, the easiest way is I am chronically underscore Rye, R-Y, on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, okay. And then to follow specifically the Miss Wheelchair Virginia, you can just look on Facebook for Miss Wheelchair Virginia Ryan Cress. And on there I have a um, GoFundMe that I'm doing donations there. But you can also, um, from any of those um, resources, or any of those pl platforms, you can reach out and book me for your own speaking engagements. I love to talk. <laughs> I love speaking. Um, and I, am, I'd be thrilled to book any of these speaking engagements that, um, anyone would like me to do. I, um, I'm very open.
open. I am, like I said, an athlete, nurse. I have lots of things to speak on, so I would be thrilled um, for that there. We want to thank Ryan Crest for joining us on the program. Uh, you can check out her social media. All the links are available right here on our Test Drive interview. We want to thank Billy Craft Honda for sponsoring Test Drive interviews. Check out their dealership on Lakeside Drive. It is fantastic. Talk to this lady. We want to thank Jesse. Uh, she has uh, just an amazing, amazing inventory of vehicles that you she do. would love to show you. Uh, plus, you're also the internet manager as well. You will find me on the internet. My picture's on every car. All right, so there you go. Uh, thanks, Jesse, for demoing just yet another incredible vehicle from Billy Craft Honda. Thank you. Uh, you can catch the program, The Mike Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 10 on 93.7 KHF. You can also check out our best of bits on the Radio 434 app and Radio434.com. Uh, check out all of our videos on this platform, The Mike Show VA, uh, whether that's Facebook or YouTube uh, or Instagram or Twitter. We even have MySpace, uh, so you can check us out. So uh, please do. For test drive interviews, this is Mike. Thanks for watching.